see a compressor with a belly band crankcase heater. This is the most common type of crankcase heat that you will find on a compressor. There are immersion type heaters that are installed in a well on most compressors. But like we say, for the most part, the belly band crankcase heater is the most common that you're going to see on residential uh, heat pumps and air conditioners. So the reason that we want to have crankcase heat on a compressor is due to thermodynamics. So if you've taken a refrigeration class recently, you would have been taught the second law of thermodynamics, which says that heat flows from hot to cold and seeks an equilibrium. So you need to understand the dynamics of the second law of thermodynamics to understand the reason for crankcase heat. As we said, energy flows downhill. It's going to flow from hot to cold. And once it does that, it's also going to seek equilibrium. Think of it like your cup of coffee in the morning that is hot, but if you leave it sit on the counter too long, the heat is going to dissipate into the surrounding air and environment, and the coffee cup will become the same temperature as the surrounding air. This is the equilibrium that the second law of thermodynamics seeks. So when we apply this principle to a compressor bearing outdoor unit, we find that the compressor in the off cycle is usually going to be the coldest place in the system. For this reason, the refrigerant is going to seek the coldest place as hot will roll downhill to the coldest place. And so therefore the refrigerant will seek the coolness of the compressor to reside and then when the compressor starts up again we may have liquid refrigerant present in the compressor that could cause real damage. This is why we want crankcase heat available so we can keep the compressor warm and keep the refrigerant from migrating to the compressor in the off cycle. On a lot of units crankcase heat on the compressor is standard but on units that crankcase heat is not applied you always have in the accessory or long line requirements for these systems that crankcase heaters should be applied if not factory supplied. You also should understand the operation of crankcase heat. This wiring diagram may look familiar to you as it was on a recent NATE certification test. So if you took a heat pump certification class recently, you may have seen this wiring diagram. The question associated with this diagram was, when is the crankcase heater energized on this system? Here we find the symbol for crankcase heat, and we see that it is controlled by the CR relay. When the CR relay is open, which, is, which happens during the off cycle, the one contact of the CR relay closes and completes the circuit through the 65 degree temperature sensor. So if the temperature is at or below 65 degrees, the crankcase heat in the off cycle will be energized. Here we see a wiring diagram for a current inverter controlled heat pump. And you'll notice that the crankcase heat is attached to the power side of the terminal block. And it is also controlled by a crankcase heater switch which is controlled by temperature. And you'll notice in the notes of unit operation, it states the crankcase heater is energized during off cycle below 65 degrees as needed. On some inverter systems, the crankcase heat is controlled through the inverter. Temperature sensors record the compressor temperature. And if it gets below 65 degrees, crankcase heat is applied to warm the compressor. One of the ways manufacturers applied crankcase heat in some older units was through a run capacitor. A trickle charge was run through a run capacitor in the off cycle to keep the compressor warm. Go to arefco.com for more videos, like, subscribe, and check back every week for new videos.